Hey guys, Bondo here. Um, this is our project for today. We got a pole barn here that we're going to be working on. Biscuit's over there unloading uh, Kevin the Kubota. Rotor's here. He's over in the weeds there, milling around. Um, this is what we're up to. We got to, we're going to prep this for concrete. It's going to have a trench drain down the middle here. So it's really cobbly, the rock, the gravel tons of big rocks and stuff in it so i had Dwayne bring a load of uh finer stuff over here he just dropped that off we got a load of the pony stuff we're gonna be moving i'm gonna move that around the side here where it's low you can see the daylight under there so i'm gonna put that stuff out of our way over here down this edge kind of build this up a little bit because it's you can see it's low there so they're unloading the big thumper, the tamper, and we're gonna get to work here. I'll show you what we're doing. Um, I'll show you how we set these trench drain in here. And hopefully we can pour this bad boy tomorrow. That's the game plan. But we'll see how we make out today. We got all day to work on this, so I think we'll knock it out. It's just me, Big Biscuit, and Dustin, Gopher, AKA Gopher, and we'll get rolling. Yeah, it's it's a little high for sure, and it's got to be fish bowled when you're doing these with a trench drain. You got to taper for your trench drain has to have a pitch to it. So your subgrade should have a pitch to it too. So your concrete's the same thickness. You don't want to set your trench drain down an inch and a half and then have your subgrade flat because you'll lose an inch and a half of concrete in the middle. If you had a five and a half inch around the edge, you'd only have um, four where your trench train is. We don't want that. So we're going to get to work here. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, here's where we're at. We got the back flat to about that second post in. Um, that's all going to be flat. The drain system is going to be up here, kind of near the, about eight feet from here. And then it's 12 feet. So we can keep that back flat and then we'll start to pitch. So I took uh, Kevin the Kubota and I kind of fishbowled all this to get this middle down it's really hard material got a lot of rocks in it we took probably 30 buckets of material out of here at least so uh, now what we're gonna do is uh, figure out where the drain's gonna be and we're gonna set a level spot inch and a half lower than this grade here so we can have an inch and a half a pitch we're gonna make it really nice in the middle down through here Get it how we want it then we'll tamp it uh, and then we're gonna well we'll probably go two and a half inches because we want to put an inch of uh, mortar underneath it so we'll probably go two and a half inches below this grade we'll get it nice and flat and we'll put we'll tamp it then we'll put some mortar down we'll set that drain right in the mortar and that'll hold it where we want it that's what we're doing now so we got to basically figure out where we want it like I said, homeowner wants it eight feet away. It's a 12 foot drain. And then we'll pitch, I don't know, probably 12 feet away from it this way. So we'll probably be somewhere in the neck of the woods where we stopped, where it's level. We'll start to pitch this way. That's how we're doing it. All right, guys, we got the trench drain ready. We put a string line down the middle at the height of the skirt board which is our concrete height i put some mortar down through here little bed and we're going to set this right in the mortar and it's got a elbow that comes out of it like that it goes in there and the boys are digging a trench digging it out by hand and it's going to pitch in that way go for in his natural habitat digging some dirt and this this is a little bit bony. A little bit? This is the kind of crap we're taking out of there. Yeah, she's, and you gotta pitch it, pitch the pipe that way. The drain's gonna lay flat, but when you punch a hole in one end, the water's gonna run out of it. So that's how we do it. All right, guys, we got it sitting in the mortar, right down the string line. We need the string line to, uh, Make sure she's straight. We checked it with a laser. So our height's good. Bump it a little bit. Um, 
we're getting the exit line out. This is pitching. Just checked it with my level. Um, gonna go right out the end of the building right there. That's how we're doing it. And then we're gonna, we're gonna start burying that line. I just wanted to show you before I buried it. And we packed that 90 coming out of there with mortar too. Used up the rest of the mortar. But when that hardens tomorrow, that thing will be rock solid. You won't be able to bump it or nothing. It'll be rock solid. So when we pour concrete, it won't move. All right, guys, we are, this is how we grade to a, to a drain. We'll either take a board or a, here we got a aluminum screed, concrete screed, and we'll set it on the skirt board and we'll set it to the drain. There's an inch and a, inch and a half of pitch going this way. So we want the subgrade, like I said earlier, to pitch to the drain. You don't want to have your subgrade flat and have an inch and a half drain. So we just will compass this right around. The boys will take that and move it down. You gonna move that down now? No. I need some. All right, I gotta get back on the skids here. So it's a little low in here. I'm gonna get some fine stuff and spritzer in there for them. That's how we do it. We just kind of work our way right around. So I'll keep moving that screed this way all the way to the end of here. Just doing the final tamp, guys. And we're gonna put some poly down our wire mesh and we're not going to put our ball cuts across the doors because uh, we can drive in this building which is nice it's normally not the case but um, tomorrow we're going to drive right in here it's going to be sweet so I'll show you what it looks like when it's all ready I'll show you what it looks like real quick before we cover it with the plastic everything's pitching nice that's how you do a trench drain, guys. It pops out here. Of course, we buried it. It runs out here. Runs daylight. It's kind of like a swale down through here that goes down to the road. So that'll just drain if they ever use it. If they want to wash their boat or something. This is for boat storage, this big building. Okay, guys. We got her ready. We... Are ready for concrete and we got concrete ordered for tomorrow morning at 6 six forty-five. we had to install a toilet flange over here they wanted that future bathroom or whatever it was way down there we had to put it wicked deep so we got that done all the wires down polys down we taped the top of the drain uh, we're just ready to rip. We're not going to put the bulkheads across the doors because we're going to drive in. So we got some 2x6x16s here for that. We're we going to leave that wheelbarrow and them buckets there. Or are we going to take them? I leave the wheelbarrow okay, we can get the buckets out of here. There we are, guys. I'll see you in the morning. Okay, guys. It's the next morning. And the mud's already here. And dark out as you can tell we got lights in here um, at 6 40 a.m. Um, we uh, we're losing daylight here this is fall New York State in the fall we're losing daylight by the day normally 6 45 it's just about light but this morning it's kind of dark we're gonna start in the back here and uh, that back area is gonna be flat and then we're gonna pitch to the drain, like uh, just like the subgrade did. So I'm looking for uh, about a five and a half slump. This concrete is 4,000 pound. It's got low air in it because these pole barns in New York State, if they're not heated, uh, they'll go through a little bit of uh, temperature changes. So we put a little bit of air in them. And it also keeps this door, this exterior piece of door from uh, freezing and popping on us. So that's how we do it. Um, we've been doing these pole barns with just a little bit of air in them for quite a while. Um, stay tuned, I'll uh, get you set up here on a tripod once we get rolling. I'll show you what the mud's going to look like. It's actually pretty warm for, uh, this is like um, first week of October. It's actually pretty warm today, so I don't think this is going to take a long time to dry. 
This is the nice part. We can pull right in this barn. It's so nice when they can do that. We got these uh, potato hooks, guys, that we pull the wire up with. So I'm sure somebody's gonna say you didn't pull the wire, but we're gonna pull the wire. That's how we do. Got a laser set up there. So this thing's like flat, about to this second post. This whole back will be flat. See what the mud looks like, huh? Kind of dark, but. You gotta put a wet screen in for you. Yeah, once we hit that post, then we're gonna pitch to the drain from there. It doesn't look hateful, does it? That ain't horrible, is it? That looks alright, don't it? Shabby. A little stony. That's not bad mud, is it? Have them pulled back up. You need a little more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were joking. <laughs> yeah, top of the two, bud. I thought you were being smart because he didn't put enough in there. <laughs> Putting in a wet screen, guys. That's just wet concrete at grade. We're gonna pull back up in there. I'm gonna put this on a tripod.
what well, that's in guys that's our mark because the skirt board's off a little so we don't trust that skirt board with our concrete so you put an x right there and you flatten it out with a laser now they'll go back and uh, they'll mag it out try to sink all them stones and stuff that's how we do it and we got a we got a wet pad over here now me and chris just put a wet pad in you can see the pitch in it from there down to the drain so that's how uh, the water will flow from the barn down into the center drain if you wash a vehicle or something where you got snow or salt on your vehicle and you pull in here that's how we're doing it Just floating off the last bit of the first truck, guys. Haven't uh, got the second truck yet. He's washing out his truck over there. I put it in pretty fast, so it didn't take us too long. I puffed up the last truck. Um, I was calling for 27 and a half, but doing the math, if we square it right here, and we that was 10 yards. If we get 10 more yards and we come to here. We're gonna need more like eight and a half to finish. So I actually called uh, Circle T and I told them that we're gonna pump up that last truck to nine yards instead of uh, seven and a half. Uh, they're not too far away, but I just don't wanna hold us up basically because you end up with a funny spot in the floor. That mud, it's pretty warm out today for this time of year. Thanks buddy. Second truck is here guys, we're going to pull this right out, right to here, that way we can get a machine in there, that's the game plan, because if we don't, we won't be able to get a machine on there, so that first truck is already tightened right up actually, but we'll get this finished off, we'll put our bulkhead on this side, and then we will pull it back in there, stay tuned, he's mixing up right now. Got Chad here in the second truck. Travis is just leaving.
They can put a toilet in there and uh, dump water in it with a five gallon bucket. <laughs> Maybe it's just a hole. Yeah, that was a waste of time. Should have put a water line sleeve in too. They can core drill that. <laughs> they got underneath the floor and core drill. You want to put more water in that? Looks pretty friggin'. Do you like that? Or you know it'll be gone, right? If we keep going like we're going, it'll be gone. That's a little better, but man, that shit over there is tight. Yeah, well, it was pretty warm yesterday. This black building, let me tell you, it's hot. Edges are gonna like soak. Happened today, isn't it? Oh, we ain't gonna be here long. These edges are gonna soak. Stuff's oh, pretty stiff already, guys. My first load. Here is truck number three, guys. They actually sent Travis back, the guy that took our first truck in here. Here we are. That's where we got. Uh, looks like nine yards is going to do it. Um, probably going to have about a yard left over, which is fine. I'd rather have a yard left over than have to run back to the plant and mess up their day. So uh, Mike's just bow floating it because he can reach it. Dustin, the gopher, he's pulling up the wire for your wire mesh police. And we're gonna pull this bad, bad boy right in. Excuse me. As soon as Mike gets done bow floating, we're gonna rip it out. Get this job in. It's actually drying up pretty fast. It's still really early. It's only 8.12. We started at 6.45, so two trucks in with the five of us. Not too shabby, but it is nice when you got these super tall doors that you can drive right in. Yes, sir. That makes life pretty nice. Last truck mod, let's see what she looks like. Mm -hmm. Right there, boys. That's what she looks like on the ground. About a five and a half slump right there. That ain't bad at all. That'll tighten right up. Especially today. Freaking tightening up fast. That's good mud. That nice mud right there. Some people say, oh, you shouldn't call it mud, it's concrete. Listen, Ken, I'll call it whatever I want on my channel. Hmm. And I'll say, hmm, too. Some people don't like it when I say, hmm. Oh, well. You don't like it, don't watch us work here, huh? We're trying to teach you people how to pour concrete. This is a learning channel. We're just trying to have fun too, guys. Have fun and get the mud down. Or the concrete for you Ken and Karens out in the world. And we're pulling up the wire too. The wire match police. See how we do it? It's gonna be a good day, guys. It's gonna be a good day. I just love it. I love concrete. 
Well, it's not the love. All right, I gotta get to work here. Mm -hmm. Putting our bulkhead in, guys. We can finish up. Obviously, we left them out so we could drive in. Now we will set that board with the laser. Right here. Nice set it on there like this. Alright, buddy. See, it's gotta go up a little bit. Tells you that little arrow. It'll go up. Yep, rip it up a little bit. Okay, pick this up a little bit. Yep, put it in there and I found it down. I'll give it a little tappy tap. Oh, a little bit more. Yep, that's what we're looking for. Anything over here? That one didn't hold really good, did it? Like that. Pick it up and throw a screw in it. Should be really close to that. Uh... Yep. Well, that one ain't holding very good, is it? Throw a couple in the middle. I'm gonna rake some dirt up on it. Mike and Chris have put a wet pad along the edge. And we're gonna screed. See if we get this bad boy in. Oh, now's the moment of truth. We got enough mud. I'm pretty sure we do. I know we wouldn't have, though. If I left it at seven and a half, we wouldn't have. Instead of the nine. So we bank some dirt up against this form board to kind of hold, help hold it, too. Looks like we're gonna have enough. It ain't even rattling yet. I always want to leave a hole so you're not digging it out. All right, hold him up right there. Mike's just both floating it. It is 8:44, so um, took us two hours. Two hours to get it in. That's uh, 29 yards. We we'll put in there. 29 yards, the five of us, took us two hours. Not too bad. Bunch of amateurs. He's backing out, he's gonna get up in there and up in here and wash out. Now uh, we gotta finish it. I'll show you some of that too today. Okay guys, we are gonna dig these doorways out. First thing you wanna do is take a string line, just a dry string line, and put it against here and over there and just pick it up and toop. See how it leaves a, leaves a line there. And we made up a little board. So we did both doorways, obviously. There's our line. This, we make a board like this, we just made one usually carry one in the truck but take like a three quarter inch notch out of it down in and then I'll show you in a minute but we're gonna dig we're gonna dig this out basically you want to push that down so it's touching here and you're gonna dig it back to this line because your door sits in here your door tracks gonna sit here and your seal of your door is gonna be right in this area so we only want to dig it back to here and slope it back. That way when the water comes in and hits your door, it runs out. So 
That's what we're gonna do with that board. I'll show you. Show them how it's done, biscuit. Just mag behind you, stuff. Yeah. So he's just going to that line right there. We we'll get to get that out of there too. Biscuit's debut here. On debut, I've done it before. Not on video. <laughs> Not under pressure. <laughs> The pressure's on. That's basically how you do it right there, guys. I'm gonna take an edge and edge of that, too. You're basically just taking that concrete right out of there to create that um, bevel. Yeah, it's fine. Close it back up, just like that. That's how we do it right there, guys. A little mask guy here. Bubbers, your harness is all messed up, kiddo. Say hi to everybody, Ro. Ro, say hi to everybody. Say hi. Rotor, rotor, rotor. After 11 o'clock, we're able to hit this piece back here. Chris and Mike are slipping over here doing this. Uh, they went around the drain, slid around the drain, so that's good. Uh, Mike's hitting edges. Chris is uh, hitting it with the power trowel to help him out a little bit. These edges are all done down through here. Still pretty creamy up here by the front, but it's warming up, so beautiful fall day here, in Central New York. That's how we do it, guys. Chris will go along and hit the edge with the machine, and then Mike will go right behind him on them uh, knee boards. Basically, Chris is whipping up some cream, uh, closing up some of the rock holes. And Michael go behind him and make it really nice. That's how we do it. So it's 2.45, guys. Chris is just shining up the floor the rest of the way. We just formed out our apron. Got a gopher in there packing it down. The hand tamper. We're gonna cut some wire, just under four feet, Jay. That's what we're gonna do. Pour on the apron. I like it though. There it is. I can see what she means, the green didn't take it apart as heavy as she wanted it to. this one? Come on, Mud. Get out here. We got Travis and Big Robbie's truck today. Mm -hmm. This is the third time Travis has been here. <laughs> He's our hero today. I'm going to have to give him another tip today. Ooh. Oh, there it goes. I was like, no. Not super wet stuff. What do you think? Okay. That's horrible. Are you dinner with your fans <laughs> True, that's the, that's the thing. He's gonna mix it up a little bit. Stand by. What we're doing.
getting the old apron done. This concrete is different than that concrete. This concrete has full air entrainment in it. That way it won't freeze. That's why we're doing it like that. That's why we pour it separate from the inside. It's a different mix. Don't want them tied together at the doorway either. Good point, Big Biscuit. You don't want the two concretes tied together in between there because this exterior stuff's gonna want to move a little different than the inside. That's why we do it that way. Mike's floating it off. This is only three yards here. Apron's in. Chris is shining out the floor. We're gonna start edging this bad boy. I don't think this apron's gonna take long. It is literally right in the sun today, guys. So, really good when you can get that done like that. That's off the Circle T, too, for helping us out. Hey, Mike. Man, language. You guys are potty mouths today. Hopefully good for you. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> you didn't know this video. <laughs> I, didn't I thought we were just, I thought we were just being smart. No. I was literally filming. <laughs> then Dustin drops one. A big up bomb. And then Mike. Oh, jeez. Oh, guys. The boys are filling up the backpack sprayer. Got the good, shit. The good, good stuff. stuff. Cure and seal. We're gonna spray it down. That's a battery pack, uh, battery powered backpack sprayer. We're gonna get out here and uh, spray it on here, and that'll help cure and seal it. And tomorrow we'll come back and cut it. Don't feel like cutting it today. This um, job is like three miles from my house, guys. So we'll sl slip in here tomorrow. We gotta pour a footer in the morning. And then we will uh, come back and slice this up. We're going to just put saw cuts in this apron as well. We got a gopher on the broom. It's his debut. See how he does. Oh, that's looking nice. You're hired. Leave that cream right on that broom. Hold on, hold on. He's gonna take my job away from me, old bummer. Yeah, I didn't give you much lap, that was my bad. <laughs> Should've gave you at least a little more than that. Yeah, just that little one. No, not that, the, what is it, a three that we got, Jay? I'd rinse that out now real quick. We're charging the battery with the generator because the um, backpack's rear battery's dead. Oh, that's nice right there. I should have had you doing the driveway. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a long haul. A lot of obstacles. Yeah, I know. That was a nightmare. This is one to learn on. This is nice and small. Do a little new if you weren't in a pit, you'd be freaking pulling into trees. We're going to make a concrete man out of you yet, bud.
for a learning it's, organization. They say it's a trap, I don't believe them. <laughs> it's a good trap. It's a I think trap. it's a money trap, yeah. Probably should wash it out. It's starting to pull them little balls. Yep. The preference. The edge is just so rolled. Yeah, it's a preference. Oh, it looks good. It looks so good. What's it been? An hour since we poured this? Maybe. No way. Not even. It's 4:08 now. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wait, I don't either. Three. Two thirty. Sealing it up, guys. Sealing the floor with the backpack sprayer. This is a cure and seal. I remember, I'll show you what the can looks like. But it's uh, water based. You can put it right in this DeWalt backpack sprayer. And it sprays really nice. And uh, this will help from salt damage and it'll slow down the curing process for you and uh, just makes it nice fills in all the pores especially when it's really hot like this it'll kind of help slow things down we'll do the apron too we've got the apron all broomed and picture framed if we spray this tomorrow it'll be dry and then we can uh, do our cuts our saw cuts tomorrow and I'll sweep up really nice. It's almost time for a cold Miller Lite. That's what I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. A little cold Miller Lite. Because it's almost beer 30. We just got to get this thing done. I'm going to turn this camera off for a minute. Okay guys, we are out of here. This white in the front apron will uh, dissipate just like that is. And we're gonna come back tomorrow and I'll show you what it looks like after we saw cut it. Um, the carpenters are gonna put the metal on the front tomorrow too. So turned out really, really nice. Um, they should be really happy with that. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay guys, we're here the next day. This is what she looks like. We're gonna cut it and make our relief cuts but that floor looks nice all sealed up really nice and shiny looks amazing and then we got our apron poured and everything we're gonna get the soft cut saw and make some cuts we gotta lay it out right now rotors here helping we can strip this form board off of here too It's a good blade, actually. There it is, guys. We are done. We just put a little gravel around the apron. Um, just little extra things we do sometimes. We don't have no water over here. It really needs a good washing, but got a little dust on it. But we got all our cuts in. There's our drain. Everything pitches to the drain nicely. It's got a good inch and a half pitch to the drain, so 
any water up in here will just run right into the drain and right out to daylight. Grab a Phillips head screwdriver, will you? There's our apron. Got our clutch in that. Well, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hit the like button if you like this stuff. Leave me a comment. That's always good. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, too. We do a lot of this stuff. I try to put out a video every week, at least one. Catch you on the next one.